Hello everyone, it's Peter here, Pios Fessner, how are you doing guys? Hello, so in today's episode I would like to show you those switching power supplies, how they vary from one to another and how similar they are, yes? So if, if you will learn one type, I think I was showing you this one the other day because I remember the 61 volts peak time uh, voltage here what I've caught and usually it's about 54 volts you know and then this is different yes but yet it's similar so I've got more of them here on my pile and I've got a computer one as well all of them are switching power supplies they are more lightweight than the linear they don't have bulky heavy transformer inside them and they've got drivers yes driver chips so these driver chips drive those transformers most of the time or can do other features as well now uh, the smaller doesn't mean the worst okay there are some transformers which you have from xbox 360 which works till date and you've got newer TVs which failing after two, three years. Okay, and how many years we had Xbox 360. So you can say that newer doesn't mean better. And that's true. That's why it's worth understanding what's going on with them and how to fix them because they are for real fixable. And if you can't get spare parts, my supplier sometimes can get spare parts because th this is a trade to trade rather than trade to the public okay and and they can get parts so if you live in the uk if you run a repair shop and you've got let's say sony hi-fi you can't get power supply for it or some components because they are just completely blank here you can't read from them and my supplier sometimes can can send them so what it is, is like, I was showing you this one. So let's put it aside and we've got another one. And let's look where's the mains. Mains here, we connect through this three pin cable. Again, goes through the fuse, varistor, yes, the same way. You've got filtration capacitors and then you've got coil, which filtrates the, all the noises mains and our device yes so that nothing is is going out from us or is is coming to us now what's happening is <clears throat> that we've got a standby voltage probably here on this one and look additional fuse so it's let's say better yes if you want to call it like that we don't know we can assume <laughs> that it's better and then you've got some either diode here, which would make sense. So I wouldn't say it's a transistor, but I would say diode has more sense. Why? Because there is a chip which then can work from the standby to, uh, to the rest of the board, okay? And the rest of the board likes to get through this connector here, a DC, which goes to the main board, which goes to the uh, LED, red LED and, and green LED, let's say depends on the model of the TV. And then you press the remote or press the button on the um, on the power button, yes. And that what is going sending back again through the, oh, not on this side, okay. Where's opto isolator? Oh, there are two opto isolators here, look. It's double opto isolator. Now, again, I haven't finished any school. I'm just fixing them since the 90s. So that's why I familiarized myself for so many years with, with the build of them. And don't ask me, you can watch like a learning electronics repair channel or something where he's going in depth uh, why something is this way or that way because he understand it. I understand how mechanism is working and how to re recognize the fault and how to remove the fault or how to fix it in general yes uh, so don't don't ask me those questions i just know modules 
and then based on those modules I'm capable of, of working every day without finishing any school yes I know I don't have to I can't touch it if I need to touch it I'm using a resistor and discharging those big cups here yes I don't want to touch uh, NYU resistor because it's lowering the contact yes so it's resisting the current from positive to negative from plus to minus uh, on the capacitor and doesn't kill the capacitor because if you will use only screwdriver this can kill the capacitor or damage the capacitor partially yes depend the state of the capacitor and so on uh, so you see the similarities are there and then opto isolator when you press that button yes will send the information back to us again to this part which is live again there are lines here you see across this power supply again and on this side you've got these lines as well from from this you can go to this like a maze and that triggers probably this chip here or there is a second chip or there are two chips you see so one of those chips or this chip they are responsible to start the main transformer and send the backlight power and the full power to the main board and that's what's happening so it's the same principles no matter which power supply look here you've got as well input you've got double for fuse and the, for a phase and the the neutral the same principles you've got diode so bridge rectifier yes capacitor to charge oh i didn't show you capacitors on that one then we're talking again the main transformer there is an opto isolator somewhere there are uh, circuits without opto isolator oh here uh, but let's not focus too much yes so we got opto isolators as well and then you've got 12 volts here uh, backlight here yes uh, two more from the TVs look I took as random as I could you know not not the same ones so you've got different input but look as a double coil so for the phase and the neutral You've got big bulky bridge rectifier, not diodes this time, so it's different than those which you've seen, yes. So there are still four diodes in the same thingy is in this packaging, yes. The cut it shape for those who don't know is the positive plus and the opposite side is the negative, and inside those two pins are the AC coming in. And then you've got either diodes or transformers here, probably some tra uh, transistors, sorry. Yes, uh, you've got, what else? Here we've got more filtration capacitors of a, uh, of a different shape, yes. And you've got only one big bulky capacitor here for 450 volts and 100 microfarads. And then you've got two sections here as well, one and two. So this section will be the main board section and this section will be the backlight section, yes? And then do we have any driver? Because that's another DC, uh, AC to DC bridge rectifier. Yes, of course we have, you see here, here is the driver. This could be the backlight driver. Uh, I don't believe this one is no this one there is a there are two one and and here is this so this one would be the backlight driver uh, you see so many similarities and that's the same way why there are two transformers on this one again don't ask me I'm not engineer I'm not you know person who knows electronics I only fix them what I see it's faulty and know how to recognize the faults you, because of that you've got two uh, rectifications yes uh, so double diodes probably this one is for this and this one is for this here you've got two smaller but still big capacitors as well as dangerous as the other one mm, so again no touching as well discharging them with this yes if you want to touch it in any way or by accident don't touch it and look that's the mains as well you see mains coming in you've got as well fuse and neutral filtration uh, and you've got as well varistor yes you get varistor here so 
yeah that's that's pretty much it you can say and that's the uh, that's the main board or that's the oh, i'm confused that's the main board yeah that's looking like the main board so that's the main board connector look here and here look how the line is going like this yes and then we do see here and we do see here so you see this is our live site here and this is our non-life so that's the uh, that's the part for the lower voltage yes as you want to call it that, like that and here are opto isolators so you see it's completely different to the ones which we see and then the the backlight is the white one yes so here so as you see the they are different but you've got similar similarities now this one is from the uh, subwoofer or from the mm, uh, how you call them it's not a speaker it's an active speaker but it's called it's called in a way that that's okay you've got in the recording studios and so on uh, those I don't remember the name I, I know this name in general I just blinded myself for some reason so anyways you got those those speakers here when you've got a recording studio they are active speakers yes uh, just and they can amplify the sound so that's a power supply look you would say it's completely different yes and in some way it is because you can't compare them to the other ones but look power connector look still filtration what we had yes the coil for the filtration of capacitor you've got still bridge rectifier for diodes you've got still bulky capacitor here which can kill you yes again can't emphasize too much 100 ohms 5 watts buy it guys if you want to play with them and disconnect always the mains oh <sighs> then you've got here a transistor probably a transistor which could be dry driven by this chip and that transistors drive this transformer and then you've got here you've got either diode or double diode Or if it's not a diode, it would be transistor, which wouldn't make sense in my head. So that would be probably a diode. Uh, we'll check, but who cares? <laughs> you will read the, what is written on it. You will Google it and add the word data sheet and you will know exactly what it is. So why bother, you know? Then you get capacitors. Then you've got a fan output here, yes. And that's looking like some module that's looking like some module but this is given us excuse me i need to take my glasses if i want to read from it because i can't so it's a plus 12 volt ground mute in and in twice so this could be this could be you know what this could be a different stuff plus 32 volts ground mute ag output okay so this is looking like some driver this this is looking like some driver uh, or what it could do no it's not audio amplifier but it's it's looking a bit similar to that we would have to open and see what the chip is below it to be true <laughs> but for sure it has a output out p p out sorry out i can't read because it's underneath the connector so it's a out p underscore out plus 32 volts twice ground twice mute ag in and in, yeah, in, and in. Mm. 
oh what this could have okay that's the power section that's the speaker output that's what could be not fun but but that's the speaker output now what it could do is have an input sound here on this connector which goes to the main board amplify it yes and then send it through this connector as an out because that would make sense that's out and is it yes and this out is connected with this with this connector here okay so you see completely different design but similarities are there and you can easily recognize so if you know one type you know exactly what to expect in the second now you understand why I didn't want to record in one video everything, yes? Because it's it's a lot to take in. Now here is a transformer removed. This one was on the enclosure somewhere here, you know, attached on, on this side here. It was removed. Uh, there is a second one which has been removed uh, and, and it's here. So one was on the enclosure and one was over there. This one was over there and there is a fan because it's a pc power supply yes now i will be looking for that screw later because we're wasting time and again look here we've got outputs so it's a bunch of wires why there is so many because you need to send quite a few amps these power supplies can have over one kilowatt Okay, so this one is rated 600 watts. At 3.3 volts, you've got 20 amps. At 5 volts, you've got 20 amps. At 12 volts, you've got 40 amps, a lot of power. And um, at minus 12 volts, 0 0.3 amps, and plus five VSB, 2.5 amps, yes? So it's a lot of wattage. Now, if you would send it with that wire, good luck yes good luck you wouldn't be able but because you've got so many of them you are capable of if you would if you would calculate like 2000 watts or 1000 watts that 600 watts can be sent for this i do believe so yes i do believe that you can send so much when i was learning about the inverters i found you know that you can't send 12 volts and 2000 watts on it because it's so many amps through the thin wire because you will melt it yes literally you, you count so if you want to weld yes you can <laughs> you can literally do it this way send too much power yes and then the cable becomes soft and start to burn uh, that's why you need so many cables because you wouldn't be able to send so much power to the whole computer now computer power supplies in general should be of a better quality not all of them are that's why companies to distinguish themselves from the rest start to use those bronze silver gold nowadays you've got even above those like platinum or something you're like whatever yes it, it's not relevant okay the cheap power supply will have cheap capacitors in the uh, in the dearer design power supply you will have dear capacitors much dear 10 times dear or much more than that yes but these capacitors are more capable than those cheap ones and that's why you get so again look it's a power inlet it goes to the main board the same way uh, you've got a filtration on this small board here you see that's the coil with a capacitor the same stuff then you've got a driver which you can see here yes that's the driver the driver needs to give you the standby by voltage and then when you've got this main connector which goes to the main board you short green and black sometimes it's a purple and and black where's the purple well sometimes it's a purple and black but usually it is a green and black you short this and that sends the signal to the ic to switch on the main power supply okay and look here it's so efficient that you get radiators on the transistors 
okay? You don't have big bulky capacitor uh, transformers here, but you've got transistors. Yes, so this could be, uh, you would have to learn about topologies of the power supply or on the amplifier, um, which are called half bridge, full bridge, yes? And then you would understand why there are transistors rather than those big bulky transformers over there, yes? This is still switching power supply. You've got still those bulky capacitors here, yes? You've got filtration capacitor over there as well, yes? And, you know, it's, it's everything as is. I don't see a bridge rectifier here. Oh, there is, look, here is a bridge rectifier, yes? And a varistor. No, these are capacitors, sorry guys, these are capacitors and the fan connector here. Here is the fan connector, okay? So you see, this video is longer than the previous one. I just wanted to show you that once you will learn one, you can start to recognize patterns and you can be more familiar with a second type of them. And I run out of copy. Um, okay, but what I wanna say as well is keep this one, buy one. You know, even if you have to overpay and pay more, buy it. If you want to play with those, don't risk your life or health, yes? And when you're starting to do it, have someone on the side so they can always pull the plug out if you need to do something dangerous. Have someone. Because sometimes we can literally forget about health and safety, especially when we've got no idea what we're dealing with, yes? So don't work with anything dangerous. If you've got something dangerous, make the maximum effort to go this really extra mile to be on the safe side because if somebody will be there and they will be on the hand with a plug and if they see anything dodgy, they will just pull the plug and they, unless they really don't like you, you know, or they don't love you or something, then you will be <laughs> shaking Steven, yes? Um, but but uh, pick pick wisely people who you're working with or you will be shaking Stephen. Uh, so yeah, if you will do it on your own, yes, you shouldn't, you shouldn't. You should always take precautions because that's your life and your risk. So I can't recommend it to you. Literally have someone, have the wire so that they can pull it. This way you will be always, in the worst case scenario, slightly <laughs> electrocuted, slightly, but not killed, yes? And if you have heart problems, if you've got, you know, some device here or something that it can kill you, don't work. Just don't, 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 don't. There are ways of diagnosing them and not connecting them uh, without you touching them. Learn how to do it otherwise, how to measure things. <laughs> then you can use those methods. Um, but don't risk your life. Because I've been told that you've got only one. If you know otherwise, please tell me. Yes. Even if you believe in some sort of reincarnation or OOBE, out of body experiences, that's okay. But at the moment, at the present, we can take that you've got this only one life. And maybe somebody cares about it as well, more than you do. And now, about the about the power supplies, what else, what else I can tell you? Yes, this wasn't to teach you fix them, this is just to show you how they are built, yes? If you will do it, you do it in your own responsibility, so just keep it in mind. I was trying to explain you everything from a an experience of a person who never graduated, but fixed them on the daily or weekly basis, yes? So hopefully you've got a value out of it. If you do so, leave us some like, but like a button or something here. If you have any questions about power supply, leave them down in the comments below. But I was trying to be thorough with them. Uh, I was explaining chips if they are not described anything on them. I was explaining them in two videos before check dates. Yes, and just take two videos before and you will know how to deal with chips which have no description because I've explained that so I don't want to repeat myself but that's everything guys 24 minutes I didn't know it will be so long so thank you guys for watching see you in the next video bye bye